हेलो गाइस गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन वेलकम टू द सेशन एंड वेलकम टू द इंडिया मोस्ट कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव प्रिपरेशन प्लेटफॉर्म दैट इज दूस एग्जाम प्रेप एंड यस वी आर लाइव We are live into the gate Amers two thousand twenty three. Yes, the free crash course going on already. Several subjects completed, and this is the EMT going on from the past few days. And today, in this session of EMFT, we are going to revise up. As you know, this crash course is intended to make your revision rock solid. Okay, what are the important fundamentals that you must remember? That you must know in the last moment. We are going to focus all of that in this particular class, and this is regarding. to the this is regarding to the transmission lines yes all right let's get started and let's get moving ahead with this particular session okay hi hi good evening everyone very very good evening good evening bhargav chalo guys so let's get moving ahead let's get started just a second again To start off, this is a brief intro about me. In case somebody new to the classes, this is Rakesh. I have secured All India Rank Ninth in the Gate Examination and completed my Masters from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Some B A problem था ये वही है क्या? All right. Okay, dear. Okay, the Gate Amers free crash course already running from the fourteenth of November, and as I told you, this is the EMT already going on in this particular. Now, guys, a uh, important update about the free mega workshop, and this is going to be conducted on our app. This is going to be conducted on our app. Yes, all right, great, great to know that, uh, Rishab. Good evening, uh, Ravi Chinmoy, and good evening, others. Quickly update your friends that the session is live. Do not forget to share it with everyone. Okay. So what's what's your discipline, Rishab, uh, in IIC? Now this Sunday, that is 18 December at 12:30 p.m. in this free mega workshop, I am going to talk about the seven key seven key career prospects through the Gate 2024 examination. Okay. What? You can achieve with the gate examination. We all commonly know about M Tech and PSUs, but there are several other major benefits. See, if I talk about minor benefits, there can be many, right? But there are seven key benefits that can make you secure a comfortable career, right, in the engineering domain. Okay, so let's talk about that. Thank you. ठीक है ठीक है. right guys one more quick update that on the same youtube channel where you are watching this session okay do not forget to subscribe in case you haven't subscribed because we are starting a very special series for you live right the live coverage subject wise questions discussion for the year of 2018 19 20 21 and 22 yes past 5 years because that is going to give you the very perfect analysis of what the gate examination is going towards what is the trend of the questions what is the level subject wise question discussion live and this starts sunday 18th of december do not forget to watch these classes gate pyqs right okay because pyqs are very much essential and one more last quick update is all india open mega mock challenge yes guys now it's mid december you should be very very serious about the mock test and in case you want to analyze your performance between the thousands of students so yes you can appear in this mega mock challenge which has been brought up by byju's exam prep for free yes this mega test is for free it has started from 30th december it is going to be live till 20th of december it is going to be live till 20th of december right so you can appear at any time at any date as per your convenient but yes if you appear you will get the analysis among the thousands of students where do you stand right now right then you will get an analysis about what are your weak areas what are your strong areas so that you can work accordingly in the remaining 45 days of time still left for you okay so register now again this is on the byju's exam prep app and let's have a quick revision of the important fundamentals of the transmission lines right important fundamentals of the transmission line okay so let's say we have a transmission line having the length l okay a quick review is a crash course so let's have a quick give you everything every type of formula that you must know from the transmission line okay so let's suppose there is a transmission line having the length equal to l okay 
it is connected to a source having the voltage Vg and the internal impedance Zg and it is terminated by a receiving station, let us say the load, it is terminated by a load whose load impedance is equal to Zl. Okay. Let us say P be any point on the transmission line. Let us say P be any point on the transmission line and I have just assumed that the transmission line is oriented along the Z axis. The transmission line is oriented along the Z axis, is oriented along the Z axis, right? Oh, is it sad to know about that, Rishabh? Right? Yes, yes, next subject is communication system only, Prajwal. Everybody, the next subject in the AMR series is communications for EC. Communication for EC, right? And for EE, I think power system or electrical machine is there, right? So, both core subjects will be running on, okay, for EC as well as for EE. Okay, so let us say this is the Z axis, the transmission line is oriented along the Z axis and let us say it starts from Z equal to 0 and it is there up to the Z equal to L. Okay, every minute details let us understand and with respect to this all important formulas to be covered. Okay, P is any point and say the distance of the point P from the source end, right, this is what I call it as the source end or the input end, okay, it is the Z and L dash, it is the distance of the point P from the load end, from the load end. Okay, it is the distance from the load end. Okay, the input at the voltage end is V0, and the current is I0, the voltage at the load end is VL, and the current entering the load is IL. Now, first of all, okay, we will not derive here because of course we do not have time. So in one session, I need to summarize all the important concepts for transmission line for you. So, what is the value of voltage and current at any point on the transmission line after solving the Helmholtz equation? Yes, it has come up by solving the Helmholtz equation. Okay, what are the Helmholtz equation we know? Del square Vs is equal to gamma square Vs, del square Hs. Okay, let me write down those Helmholtz equation for you. Helmholtz equation which exists on transmission line also and that is in the simplified form because the transmission line is around the z axis, so it turns out to be del 2 Vs by del z square is equal to gamma square Vs and del 2 Es Is by del z square is equal to the gamma square Is where gamma is known as the propagation constant. First important formula for you, gamma is the propagation constant and it is given by the formula under root of r plus j omega l is multiplied by g plus j omega c. Under root of r plus j omega l is multiplied by the g plus j omega c. That is what is the gamma and the voltage and current at any point after solving these Helmholtz equation, after solving these Helmholtz equation, their solution, it is a simple differential equation case, they have been solved and the solutions are obtained as Vs equal to V0 plus E power minus gamma Z plus V0 minus E power plus gamma Z and Is is I0 plus E power minus gamma Z plus I0 minus E power gamma Z. Now, why, what is the superposition of these two equations? Why there are two equations coming up here? Because at every point on the transmission line, there will be an incident wave and reflected wave. Why is there the reflected wave? Dhyan dena. Why do we have the reflected wave here? Because when a wave, either the voltage or the current wave, when it is traveling on the transmission line and when it reaches the load end, when it reaches the load end, okay, the impedance of the line is Z0. I am going to define that impedance also. The impedance of the line is Z0, but the impedance at the load end is suppose the ZL. Okay, so here I can say that there is the impedance mismatch. Clearly, there is the condition of impedance mismatch here. There is the condition of what? There is the condition of impedance mismatch. And due to that impedance mismatch, here the impedance is Z0, here it is ZL, there will be reflections as we know about the reflection and refraction theory, right? So, at every point, there will not only be an incident wave, but there will also be a reflected wave. There will also be a reflected wave. So, out of these two equations, now, let me write down. So, we have, sorry, let me change this color first of all. Okay. So, we have Vs is equal to at any point, at any point Z, Vsz is given by the equation V0 plus E raised to the power minus gamma Z plus V0 minus E raised to the power plus gamma Z, where this is the voltage equation. The first part is the voltage equation of the incident wave of the incident wave or also known as 
ऑल्सो नोन एज पॉजिटिवली ट्रेवलिंग वेव पॉजिटिव ट्रेवलिंग वेव द नेक्स्ट वन इज द इक्वेशन ऑफ द रिफ्लेक्टेड वेव और नोन एज द नेगेटिव ट्रेवलिंग वेव और नोन एज द नेगेटिव ट्रेवलिंग वेव ओके और नोन एज द नेगेटिव ट्रेवलिंग वेव दिस वन इज द इंसिडेंट वेव दिस वन इज द रिफ्लेक्टेड वेव वन इज पॉजिटिवली ट्रेवलिंग वेव वन इज द नेगेटिव ट्रेवलिंग वेव वन इज नोन एज द नेगेटिव ट्रेवलिंग वेव डन अच्छा जी ठीक है Similarly, similarly, we have the current equation. Out of them, one of them is the positively traveling incident wave. And this is the negatively traveling current wave. Okay, right. Polarization. Okay, I'll I'll cover that also in one separate class, as well as possible. Pro polarization be important. Eh? A small session also will suffice in the revision for that, as well. Okay, I'll try to cover that in some session. Chali, aage aa jaate. This is the voltage and current general equation. Now. Now, what is the time varying form? The previous one was the phasor form, and we know as you learned yesterday also uh, in the plane wave class, the time varying form will come up to be v naught e raised to the v naught plus e power minus alpha z. The alpha or beta kya hai? So see, gamma is the propagation constant under root of r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c, and gamma will be a complex number written as alpha and j beta. Alpha plus j beta, where alpha is the attenuation constant, beta is known as the phase constant. Okay, alpha is the attenuation constant. Beta is known as the phase constant. Right? right. And the gamma is given by alpha plus j beta. Okay, alpha plus j beta, where beta is the phase constant, which is measured. in radian per meter and alpha is the attenuation constant which is measured in the unit of neper per meter or another unit of it is decibel per meter because very commonly attenuation is measured in decibel as well okay the conversion from one to another is one neper is equal to 8.686 decibel One neper will be equal to the 8.686 decibel, so you can convert between the two units also. Okay, so this is what is the time varying form, which turns out to be v naught plus e power minus alpha z cos omega t minus beta z plus v naught minus e power alpha z cos omega t plus beta z. Similarly for the current. Similarly for the current. Now characteristic impedance, as I told you, let's define the z naught also. The characteristic impedance, basic definition. <coughs> Guys, all important formula of transmission lines will be covered. Up. Don't worry. Okay, everything, all important concepts, variety of problems. What 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 happens? Just you have to keep focusing. It is the ratio of the positively traveling voltage wave to the positively traveling current wave. Yes, we all know impedance, the voltage by current. As a reference, of course, impedance is voltage by current. But as a reference, we take it as the ratio of positive voltage upon positive current. That is incident voltage upon incident current. Now, what is the incident voltage equation? V naught plus C power minus gamma z, and what is the incident current equation? I naught plus C power minus gamma z. E power minus gamma z got cancelled, so it is simply V naught plus upon I naught plus. And after solving again from the basic KVL and KCL law, solving it, we get under root of R plus J omega L is divided by G plus J omega C, right? So Z naught is equal to under root R plus J omega L divided by G plus J omega C. Now what is more important here is, hello, this is in general a complex quantity again. Okay, the so impedance also will be in general complex only. Will be in general complex only. But let us talk about the very important case out to which actually questions are asked in the gate examination. Okay, number one lossless line, number two distortionless line. Very very important, right? Very very important lossless line. So a lossless line is one in which the conductor Okay, of the line as well as the dielectric. So we all know transmission line is just like two parallel conductors, uh, two or more parallel conductors. Separated by a dielectric. This has to be a dielectric. Okay. 
So the conductor of the line is perfect and when is the conductor perfect when its conductivity is tending to infinity and the dielectric separating them the dielectric separating them is lossless and what is a lossless dielectric sigma d equal to zero what is the main point that you have to focus here is that for any lossless line the transmission line parameters r and g will be zero right every transmission line every transmission line every transmission line we know that just a moment it's build up of two or more parallel conductors let's take the case of two parallel conductors like the coax cable only okay separated by a dielectric so this is one conductor and conductor and this is the dielectric okay this conductor has r and l distributed uniformly through its length right we defined r and l as the resistance and the inductance resistance and the inductance of the conductor per unit length these are known as the resistance and inductance of the conductor of the conductor of the conductor which is building the transmission line and they are per unit length parameters per unit length that is why what is going to be the unit for r is ohm per meter what is the unit for l it is henry per meter okay the dielectric is defined by g and c which are known as the conductance which are known as the conductance and the capacitance of the dielectric yes capacitance as we all know is a very characteristic and important property for any dielectric material this is the conductance and capacitance of the dielectric material which is separating the two conductors and these are also per unit length parameters and that is why they have the units of what this will be defined as the unit of siemens per meter and capacitance here is farad per meter okay one of one of the equivalent diagram of a transmission line looks something like this although this is not very much important for question but this is how is one of the equivalent diagram of a transmission line looks like the conductor has the basic properties of its resistance and inductance and the dielectric is defined by its conductance and the capacitance all right Achha. so for any lossless line r and g will always be equal to the zero for any lossless line the r and g will always and always be equal to zero and guys if r and g is equal to zero now what are the important conclusions that will follow usko bhi dekh lete for a lossless line r and g is equal to zero due to which due to which the gamma will become square root of r plus j omega l r is zero multiplied by g plus j omega c to g is also zero so what is gamma j omega j omega is squared so outside the under root j omega root lc and when you compare it to alpha plus j beta when you compare to alpha plus j beta there is no real part here so alpha will be the zero and beta is going to be equal to omega under root lc omega under root lc alpha is zero beta is omega root lc very important formula right but then we also know but then we also know beta is also given by the formula omega by u where u is known as the speed of the wave so what is the speed of the wave traveling on the transmission line it is omega by beta and beta ka formula rakhte hue it is going to come up as 1 upon under root lc next important formula for you okay then let's talk about the z not and z not is root over r plus j omega l is divided by g plus j omega c right and that is going to be r plus j omega l r is 0 divided by g plus j omega c g is also 0 right g is also 0 so j omega j omega cancelled and it is root over l by c right So after solving, let me write down the final formula only. So Z not is given by the formula root over of L by C. 
okay and please note that this impedance is purely real all the imaginary terms j omega j omega are cancelled so the impedance of a lossless line is purely real given by the formula root over lc beta is omega root lc and alpha is zero again this zero value of alpha shows that there is no attenuation and that is why this line is lossless there is no attenuation present on this transmission line there is no attenuation present on this transmission line. The next important case that you must all cater, you must all take care of is the distortionless line. I told you, you know, for questions, these two are important cases. A distortion li line is one in which the attenuation constant is not zero, but it is at least independent of frequency, it does not increase with frequency, which happens for the lossy lines. Okay, the attenuation constant will be some constant independent of frequency and phase constant is a linear function of frequency right phase constant is a linear function of frequency okay so it should be proportional to omega right it should be of the form it should be of the form k omega linear function k omega power 1 this is the constraint and to meet this constraint distortionless line is 1 in which r by l is equal to g by c you know sometimes there can be question on this also given three parameters find the fourth so for a, any distortionless line r by l is equal to g by c a transmission line which does not distort of course there will be some attenuation attenuation is not zero but it does not distort the shape of the the shape of the information traveling on it okay distortion distortionless line r by l is equal to g by c now for r by l equal to g by c we know guys okay let's not derive it's a two line derivation but still let's not derive we know the general formula of gamma and z naught in that general formula of gamma and z naught, whenever I put the condition r by l is equal to g by c, r by l is equal to g by c, yes, very important formula will come up, very correct prajwal, right, gamma, which is alpha plus j e beta, which is root over of r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c, ye put karne ke baad, the formula for alpha, you are going to get it as under root of rg, constant independent of frequency. It is going to be the term under root of rg and beta is going to be equal to, beta is going to be equal to omega root lc. The beta is going to be equal to omega root LC. The alpha is root RG and beta is equal to omega root LC. Beta is equal to omega root LC. Clear? Eh? Beta is equal to the omega root LC. But yeah, ye bhi achha hai. Theek hai? Now, 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 done. What about the Z0? Z0. Z0 turns out to be the same formula. So, they go beta ka bhi same formula. Hai. Beta also has the same formula, omega root LC. And when I want to talk about the Z0, Z0 is root L by C, or that is also equal to root over R by G because R by L is equal to G by C. Na? So, when you want to calculate L by C, that is going to be R by G. Okay. So, Z0 is root L by C or root R by G. Both the formulas you can use here. Both the formulas you can use here. Now, actually, if you take a, take a note here, na? okay. Here, questions this way. I am telling you the question philosophy when you go to question. So, you know, commonly sometimes uh, RLGC given, yeah, out of the RLGC, one or two parameters given. Yeah, they have given nothing. They have directly given alpha, beta, Z naught. Find out RLGC. Very common question, right? Find out RLGC. So, I'll write down the philosophy of the question here. I'll write down the philosophy of the question here. Given alpha, beta. Z naught, find R, L, G, see this is a very common question, theme samaj lena question ki, this is a very common type of question from this topic, so what you can do is na, what you can do is, uh, sorry the pointer is not working, so I am not much comfortable, but fir bhi karte hai, so multiply alpha and Z naught, when you multiply alpha and Z naught, use the second formula for Z naught, right, use the second formula for Z naught, right, so root over R by G, into root R G, right, G G cancel ho jayega, root R into root R will be R, root R into root R will be R, when you divide it, when you divide it, what do you get, alpha Z naught ko divide karo ge, to R and R will cancel, G upar chala jayega, root G into G will be G, ye a gaya, so it is the multiplication, simple, it is the multiplication, so you can use 
R is equal to alpha Z naught. G is equal to alpha by Z naught. Right. Similarly, similarly, if I now use the formula for beta multiplied with the first formula for Z naught, so when multiply karenge, kya milega? beta into Z naught is omega. C C will cancel root L into root L will be L. Similarly, when you divide beta by z naught divide karenge so there will be a omega ll will cancel this so will go c will go in the numerator root c into c will be c that is omega c that is omega c correct so what is the value of l then what is the value of l then l is equal to beta into z naught divided by omega and c is equal to beta by omega z naught this is a very important and common type of question. That is why I have written this separately. No need to remember this formula. Approach. This approach is important. You remember alpha, beta, z naught formula. Multiply and divide approach. You are going to get hold of this very, very important type of question. Get hold of the very, very important type of question. Let us go to the next important case. Let us cover up the concepts first in continuity. Okay. And let us also first write down the input impedance discussion. Let us write down the input impedance discussion. Now, again, the similar picture that we have discussed in the beginning, there is a transmission line whose length is L. Okay, it is oriented along the Z axis. So, this is the Z coordinate Z equal to 0. That is the Z coordinate Z equal to L. This is the input side. So, source voltage Vg and the source impedance Zg. The voltage at the input side V0 and the current entering is I0. And this is the terminating side, which is terminated by load impedance ZL. The voltage here is VL and the current entering the load is IL. Okay. Okay, Z is the distance of any point P from the load end, any general point and L dash is the distance from the load end. Okay, we are interested in finding the input impedance on next very, very, very important topic from the transmission line. The input impedance of transmission line. Okay, the input impedance of the transmission line. Correct. The next very, very important case is the input impedance of the transmission line. Okay. Now pay attention. Input impedance of the transmission line. Very important. Yes, lots of question can be expected from here. In general, we know impedance. In general, we know impedance at any point is the ratio of voltage and current at that point. Impedance is the ratio of voltage and current. So at any point you want the impedance, you can divide the voltage and current at that point. But I want the impedance at Z equal to 0. Input impedance at Z equal to 0. Okay. So we know the voltage and current equations. Okay. First of all, we have revised the voltage and current equations onto which we put Z equal to 0. We further simplify and what do we obtain after simplification? What do we obtain after simplification? Let me write down the very important formula. For the input impedance here, the very important formula for the input impedance here is Z0 into ZL plus Z0 tan hyperbolic gamma L divided by Z0 plus ZL tan hyperbolic gamma L. Okay. Chalo. Okay, Z0, characteristic impedance of the line, ZL, load impedance of the line, gamma, propagation constant of the line, L is the length of the line, is the length of the line, correct? This is the formula for input impedance. Achha, this is the input impedance seen at the input side. Okay, I can say this is the input impedance at the input side, right? Okay. Yes, it will help you at least to score uh, at least some good marks here because uh, uh, the important concepts, most important concepts at least I am covering here in this session, Hirsch. Okay. But not in the derivation form, only in the quick revision and mostly question form. Depends on topic. Some topics require quick concepts, some topics require quick questions. Okay. Yeah, Saturday. Saturday it is a double E uh, uh, mock test. Saturday there is a double E mock test at 11 a.m. A full length mock test as per the gate pattern live on the YouTube. Okay, that is again live on the YouTube. Chalo. Okay, now this is the input impedance. Suppose, what is the impedance at any point then? What is the impedance at any point on the line? Wo formula bhi John Lee At any point on the line, impedance is given by, dekho, what is the technique? The technique is to remember it using the previous formula only. The pointer ke, that is difficult to teach. 
ओके ध्यान देना द पॉइंट हेयर इज प्लीज पे अटेंशन द पॉइंट हेयर इज दिस इज द इनपुट इंपिडेंस इंपिडेंस एट द इनपुट साइड एंड वॉट इज कमिंग इन द फॉर्मुला इज एल वॉट इज एल लेंथ ऑफ द लाइन वॉट इज एल लेंथ ऑफ द लाइन वॉट इज दिस एल लेंथ ऑफ द लाइन और आई कैन से अदर वे ऑफ लुकिंग इन टू इट वी नो एल इज द लेंथ ऑफ द लाइन अदर वे ऑफ लुकिंग इन टू इट इज आई वॉन्ट द इंपिडेंस एट दिस पॉइंट डियर वॉट इज द डिस्टेंस ऑफ दिस पॉइंट फ्रॉम द लोड एंड टेल मी वॉट इज द डिस्टेंस ऑफ दिस पॉइंट फ्रॉम द लोड एंड टेल मी बोल दीजिए वॉट इज द डिस्टेंस ऑफ दिस पॉइंट फ्रॉम द लोड एंड दैट इज इक्वल टू द एल वॉट इज द डिस्टेंस ऑफ द पॉइंट फ्रॉम द लोड एंड एंड दैट इज इक्वल टू द एल डिस्टेंस ऑफ द पॉइंट फ्रॉम द लोड एंड एंड दैट इज इक्वल टू द एल दैट इज इक्वल टू द एल एवरीबडी क्लियर ओके सो इन द फॉर्मूला दैट इज एल एल इज कमिंग इट इज द डिस्टेंस ऑफ द पॉइंट वेर आई एम कैलकुलेटिंग द इम्पिडेंस एंड दैट इज द डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम द लोड एंड सो वॉट आई विल डू सपोज आई वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट डियर सपोज आई वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट द इम्पिडेंस हेयर सपोज आई वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट वॉट इज द इम्पिडेंस हेयर सपोज आई वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट वॉट इज द इम्पिडेंस हेयर सपोज आई वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट द इम्पिडेंस हेयर सो वॉट विल आई डू वॉट इज द डिस्टेंस ऑफ दिस पॉइंट फ्रॉम द लोड एंड वॉट इज द डिस्टेंस ऑफ दिस पॉइंट फ्रॉम द लोड एंड दैट इज एल डैश आई विल जस्ट रिप्लेस द एल बाई एल डैश सिंपल तो सिंपल वे ऑफ रिमेंबरिंग दिस फॉर्मूला सिंपल वे ऑफ रिमेंबरिंग दिस फॉर्मूला जस्ट रिप्लेस एल बाई एल डैश जेड नॉट जेड एल प्लस जेड नॉट टैन हाइपरबोलिक गामा एल डैश डिवाइडेड बाय Z0 नॉट प्लस जेड एल टैन हाइपर बोलिक गामा एल डैश टैन हाइपर बोलिक गामा एल डैश ठीक है The simple way of remembering the formula, just replace L by L dash, where L dash is equal to distance of the point, distance of that point, wherever you want to calculate the impedance, you just calculate a distance from from the load end from the receiving end from the terminating end theek hai ji this is what it is theek hai done now now we know the general formula let's come back to the input impedance we know the general formula is z0 zl plus z0 tan hyperbolic gamma l divided by Z0 plus ZL tan hyperbolic gamma L and if I want to write down the formula for the very very important as I told you lossless line is very very important. So if I want to write down the formula for the lossless line, so please note that for any lossless line, gamma is simply equal to J beta. Alpha to zero होता है ना lossless line के लिए तो gamma is J beta, right? If gamma is J beta, we have tan hyperbolic gamma L. Which becomes tan hyperbolic j beta l and tan hyperbolic j theta, according to the Euler's formula and all, tan hyperbolic j theta is j tan theta, is j tan theta, is j tan theta, and accordingly your input impedance formula will look like z naught into z l plus j z naught tan beta l, j z naught tan beta l divided by z naught. Plus J Z L tan beta L. This is the next and the very very important formula for you. This one is the very important formula. You can feel Z n equal to Z naught. Z L plus J Z naught tan beta L upon Z naught plus J Z L tan beta L. Correct. Correct. That is what it is. Very important formula for input impedance of a lossless line. Here, the parameter beta into L is also known as is also known as electrical length of the line. is known as the electrical length of the transmission line are there some problem here again electrical length of the line 
श्रेयांश जी बीटा वैल्यू ओमेगा रूट एल सी ऑलरेडी वी हैव रिवाइज दिस ये भी जस्ट गोइंग टू द बिगनिंग पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस एवरीथिंग अबाउट लॉसलेस लाइन ओके चलो डन डन ओके नाउ व्हाट इज इवन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट व्हाट इज इवन मोर एंड मोर एंड मोर इंपॉर्टेंट इन द क्वेश्चन इज कि सपोज यू हैव अ लॉसलेस लाइन ओके यू हैव अ लॉसलेस लाइन एंड द फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट केस इज कि वेन एवर इट्स लेंथ इज लैमडा बाय फोर और थ्री लैमडा बाय फोर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर्मूला और फाइव लैमडा बाय फोर और आई कैन से एनी ऑर्ड मल्टीपल ऑफ लैमडा बाय फोर वन थ्री फाइव एनी ऑर्ड मल्टीपल ऑर्ड नंबर इज रिटर्न एज टू एन प्लस वन सो इफ द लेंथ ऑफ द लाइन इज एनी ऑर्ड इंटीग्रल मल्टीपल ऑफ लैमडा बाय फोर इट्स इनपुट इंपिडेंस डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट इन दिस फॉर्मूला इज गिवेन बाय द फॉर्मूला जेड नॉट स्क्वायर इज डिवाइडेड बाय जेड एल जेड नॉट स्क्वायर इज डिवाइडेड बाय द ZL. is given by the formula Z not square divided by ZL, right? And the second important case is, the second important case is whenever the length is lambda by two or lambda or or it is three lambda by two. Or two lambda, or any multiple of lambda by two, any integral multiple of lambda by two. ठीक है, any integral multiple of lambda by two, right? Any integral lambda by two, lambda three, lambda by two, कुछ भी, any integral multiple of lambda by two. Then, then your input impedance. then your input impedance is just a copy of the load impedance then it is just equal to the load impedance zn is equal to zl yes dreamer correct then the zn is just equal to the zl okay lots of questions you know lots of questions can be expected from this i'll just give you an example before going to the next i'll just give you an example ek example yahan pe banate hain right suppose You have a transmission line given. एक example बनाते हैं first of all everybody. Just look into this example. what should be the input impedance what should be the input impedance now here there is the main line let's say there is a line number 1 which is terminated by two more transmission line sections which is terminated by two more transmission line sections so what to do and how to solve this question very expected type of question from transmission line and if you are enjoying do not forget to like the session keep liking the session okay so this main transmission line is terminated by two more sections of transmission line and that is why to deal to deal and to calculate zn of the main line we first need to know what is the load impedance connected here 
what is the load impedance connected here and what is the load what is the terminating impedance here it is two more transmission lines so what is required here is to calculate the input impedance of both okay to input impedance of both let's say the first input impedance here is z in one and then next let us calculate the input impedance of the second piece okay so that when i calculate the input impedance of a line when i calculate the input impedance of a line i can reflect i can replace this whole line effectively by its input impedance so guys what should be the value of z in one everybody what should be the value for z in one it's a lambda by four line first is the lambda by four line so what is the z in one everybody the formula for lambda by four line very very important you will feel in the many of the pyqs lambda by four line lambda by two lines are very important so here it is given by the formula z naught square by z l z naught 50 hai to 50 square divided by 100 and that is 25 ohms so this is done right next is the lambda by two line lambda by 2 line so the input impedance is suppose z in 2 and that is given by the formula zl and zl here is 50 zl is 50 okay so now i know both the impedance so what i will do before calculating the z in directly we have to first make the equivalent diagram so what is the next sorry okay so what is now the equivalent picture we call this diagram now upcoming diagram as the equivalent circuit diagram Let us now take the equivalent circuit diagram everybody. So what is the equivalent circuit diagram? I have the main line. I have the main line whose impedance was equal to 50 ohms and it was terminated by two lines, both the lines. Now we know the input impedance of both the lines and both the input impedance are real. Real means resistive. If a impedance is real, it means it is a resistive value. Okay, so 25 ohms and 50 ohms. The first one is 25 ohms. This one is 25 ohms. And second one, it is connected in parallel. Both are in parallel as seen in the picture. And this one is the 50 ohm. This is the Z in 2 and this was the Z in 1. So now, effectively, you have two resistance in parallel. And this is going to behave as, dear, this is going to behave as the load for the main line. We want the Z in. We want the Z in and the length of this main line, I think lambda by 8 given. Hai. So this parallel resultant, whatever value you get is going to behave as the load, the terminating value for the main line. And load is whatever is the impedance that is occurring at the end. That is the load impedance. So this now behaves as ZL, which is equal to 50 parallel with 25 and R parallel R by 2 is R by 3. So this becomes 50 by 3 ohms. So what is going to be the ZL here? 50 by 3. What is going to be the ZL here is known as the 50 by 3 ohms, everybody, correct? The ZL here is 50 by 3 ohms, okay? Now, you will calculate the Z in, okay? Now, you will calculate the Z in, length is lambda by 8, right? So, what is beta into L? Beta is 2 pi by lambda is multiplied by lambda 8, so this is pi by 4. So, wherever required tan beta L, tan pi by 4 is going to be 1. So, Z in has the formula Z naught, general formula bhi aage hain pe, Z L plus J Z naught tan beta L divided by the Z naught plus J Z L tan beta L, correct hai? Z in is equal to Z naught, Z L plus J Z naught tan beta L divided by Z naught plus J Z L tan beta L. Okay, now let us solve this and what is going to be the value of Z in? Z naught ka value 50 hai, multiplied by Z L. What is the Z L here? Sorry. What is the Z L here? 50 by 3? 50 by 3 plus J Z naught J 50 tan theta is 1 here divided by Z naught which is 50 plus J Z L 50 by 3 tan beta L is 1. So clearly 50, 50, 50 common and divided uh, cancelled. Now this is 50, 1 by 3, 3 se multiply kar denge throughout. So this becomes 1 plus J 3 divided by 3 plus J. This is going to be the answer. We can rationalize and get the answer. So this is going to be 50, 1 plus J 3 is multiplied by 3 minus j divided by 3 plus j 3 minus j will be 3 square plus the 1 square okay and that is going to be 10 
50 divided by 10 is cancelled and that is equal to 5 and then your answer is left as 3 and uh, minus j square 3 that becomes plus the 3 3 6 ho jayega. please check out the values again minus j and this is plus 9j to plus 8j plus 8j just check out this calculation once again okay so i am getting the answer as i am getting the answer as the final input impedance the final input impedance here is 5 into 6 plus 8j or that is equal to 30 plus j 40 ohms 30 plus j 40 ohms okay check out this calculation once hai na bas ek bar isko tally kar lena hope so this is correct only okay done right done okay then some more important formulas and important cases related to it okay next is the voltage reflection coefficient at any point Voltage reflection coefficient is the ratio of reflected voltage wave to the incident voltage wave as we define for the EM waves also. Ratio of reflected voltage wave to the incident voltage wave. Guys, this K at any point is given by the formula. Reflected voltage wave. The reflected voltage wave was given by the formula V0 minus E power gamma Z. V0 minus E power gamma Z divided by the incident voltage wave and the incident voltage wave was given by v naught plus e power minus gamma z so this is v naught minus is divided by the v naught plus e raised to the power 2 gamma z e raised to the power 2 gamma z but what is the final formula so this is the voltage reflection coefficient at any point at any point right so dear at any point na, the k is given by the formula the K is given by the formula, the K is given by the formula KL E raised to the power minus 2 gamma L minus L minus Z, where L is the length of the line, Z is the point at which you are calculating the impedance, where what is KL? Dear, KL is known as the dear, load reflection coefficient reflection coefficient at load mm -hmm. very difficult to teach here today some issue is there with the smart board Re reflection coefficient okay load reflection coefficient and it is given by the formula kl is given by the formula that is ZL minus Z0 is divided by ZL plus Z0. Very important formula, especially the load reflection coefficient is the very important formula. ZL minus Z0 is divided by the ZL plus Z0. This is just like This formula is just like the reflection coefficient that you write for the normal impedance, normal incidence, okay. The reflection coefficient for the normal impedance, normal incidence for the EM waves, eta 2 minus eta 1 upon eta 2 plus eta 1. The formula that you study in the normal incidence case, the formula that you study in the normal incidence, normal incidence of the EM wave. Eta 2 minus eta 1 upon eta 2 plus eta 1. Eta 2 is the impedance of second medium. Eta 1 is the impedance of first medium. Similarly, here the second medium where the wave is going is the load. And the first medium where the wave was traveling is the transmission line. So, eta 1 is Z0, eta 2 is ZL. Okay, very similarly, you can, you know, relate this formula and study. Okay, so actually all the reflection formulas are very similar to the EM wave formula. Right? In case if they ask the current reflection coefficient, in case, then that is the negative of the previous formula. Okay, if they, if they only tell you reflection coefficient, if they only tell you reflection coefficient, if they only tell you reflection coefficient, okay, then, then it is 
द वोल्टेज रिफ्लेक्शन कोफिशियंट बाई डिफॉल्ट ओके देन वंस वी हैव द रिफ्लेक्शन कोफिशियंट वी कैन टॉक अबाउट द स्टैंडिंग वेव रेशियो नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर्मुला डायरेक्ट फॉर्मुलाज वी आर टॉकिंग स्टैंडिंग वेव रेशियो एज वी नो इट इज द रेशियो ऑफ द मैक्सिमम एम्पलीट्यूड सीन ऑन द स्टैंडिंग वेव डिवाइडेड बाई द मिनिमम एम्पलीट्यूड स्टैंडिंग वेव एज यू ऑल नो एज अ कॉन्सेप्ट इट इज बिल्ड वेन अ इंसिडेंट एंड रिफ्लेक्टेड वेव सुपर इम्पोज a wave traveling in uh, positive direction wave traveling in negative direction they superimpose and they form a standing wave the ratio of the maximum and minimum amplitude of the standing wave right where they instruct constructively where they interfere destructively okay sometimes they interfere constructively sometimes they interfere destructively we get the maximum and minima accordingly what is the location of those maximum minima that is also important wo bhi cover karenge and the standing wave ratio guys is given by the formula 1 plus mod k l divided by 1 minus mod k l yahan se aap reverse formula bhi likh sakte ho right from here if you want you can write down the magnitude of kl given by the formula s minus 1 divided by the s plus 1 okay S minus one divided by the S plus one. Sometimes they can discuss the questions only on the range of these parameters. You must remember that reflection coefficient, the magnitude of it can never be greater than one. The reflected energy cannot be more than the incident energy. Number one point. And because of this value, the new the KL is mod KL is minimum zero. It's anyways positive only. So numerator is greater than or equal to the denominator. Right, so S is always equal to or greater than one. S is greater than equal to one, or I can write down the range of S is one less than equal to S less than infinity. Okay, in not only in gate but in several PSU or ESE exam also they have asked sometimes what is the minimum value of standing wave ratio possible? Yeah, what is the range of standing wave? Some important fundamental questions are built up from here. Some important fundamental questions are built up from here. right some important fundamentals are built up here done chalo cool let's move ahead to the next let us move ahead to the next okay this is what is the standing wave ratio ओके okay. अच्छा समटाइम्स चलो पहले आगे आ जाते हैं व्हाट इज द लोकेशन ऑफ मैक्सिमा पॉइंट्स एंड व्हाट इज द लोकेशन ऑफ मिनिमा पॉइंट्स इसको भी देख लेते हैं ओके सो टू कैलकुलेट द लोकेशन ऑफ मैक्सिमा पॉइंट्स मैक्सिमा व्हिच आर आल्सो नोन एज द एंटी नोड्स ऑफ द स्टैंडिंग वेव व्हिच आर आल्सो द एंटी नोड्स ऑफ स्टैंडिंग वेव एंड मिनिमा व्हिच विल बी रिप्रेजेंटिंग द नोड्स ऑफ द स्टैंडिंग वेव ओके where do they occur we can determine the distance from the load end distance distor, distance from the terminating end but before that you have to calculate the kl load reflection coefficient whose formula we have just seen zl minus z on upon zl plus z not and we know that z impedance is general in general complex and let us write down this complex number as mod k e power j theta k mod k is the magnitude of the reflection coefficient theta k is the phase the argument of that complex number the maxima is given by this formula theta k minus 2 beta d max is minus 2 n pi where n can be any integer 0 1 2 theta k the phase of the complex number minus 2 beta d max d max is the distance of that maxima from load end okay and because of that oscillatory behavior there will be several maxima we know so it is the distance of the maxima from the load end but 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 it is equal to minus 2 n pi so that means you can remember it is how this is minus 2 n pi 2 n is always the even number so this is simply remember this is the even multiple 2 n of pi this is the even multiple of pi okay this is the even multiple of pi everybody this is the even multiple of pi okay in case of minima remember the same formula in case of minima just replace this even by odd okay just replace this even by odd everybody right in case of the minima na right 2n plus 1 if 2n is even 2n plus 1 is always odd okay so remember this formula as simply odd multiple remember this formula simply as the odd multiple of pi remember this formula as the odd multiple of pi everybody odd multiple of pi 
करेक्ट है दिस इज गोइंग टू बी नोन एज द ऑड मल्टीपल ऑफ पाई ओके सम इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट चलो इसको भी देख लेते हैं वेन एवर के इज अ पॉजिटिव रियल नंबर देर इज द मैक्सिम एट द लोड ओनली एंड देन देर विल भी अदर मैक्सिम ऑल्सो वट इज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन टू मैक्सिम वही मैं बताने जा रहा हूं नेक्स्ट वेन एवर के इज अ नेगेटिव रियल नंबर देर इज अ मिनिमा एट द लोड ओके सो फॉर सम स्पेशल वैल्यूज ऑफ के द मैक्सिम एंड मिनिमा आर एट द लोड ओनली के इज पॉजिटिव रियल नंबर मैक्सिम एट द लोड के इज अ नेगेटिव रियल नंबर मिनिमा एट द लोड इंपॉर्टेंट कंक्लूजन है ओनली इंपॉर्टेंट कंक्लूजन ही बोल रहा हूं मैं यहाँ पे एंड इफ के इज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर देन देर इज नाइर अ मैक्सिम नॉर द मिनिमा एट द लोड nothing there is neither a maxima nor a minima at the load there will be some thing which is neither maxima nor minima acha what is the distance between right ye yahan pe let me see it is not mentioned here na i think chalo ha what is the distance between next important point everybody what is the distance between consecutive maxima also known as consecutive antinodes is given by lambda by 2 distance between two consecutive antinodes okay similarly what should be the distance between this is proved even by the previous formula this can be proved by the sketch by sketching the standing wave patterns okay that is the distance between consecutive nodes between any two consecutive nodes this is also known as lambda by 2 and eventually here the next formula what is the distance between a consecutive node and anti node and this is given by the formula lambda by 4 this is given by the formula lambda by 4 distance between a consecutive node and anti node is lambda by 4 these are also next important formula okay the next set of key points what is the fraction of power reflected back what is the meaning of this fraction of power reflected back okay that is the pr divided by pi as compared to incident how much power is reflected back and that is given by the formula mod k square similarly very very important how much is the power transmitted into the load as compared to incident pt upon ya p load likh dete hain isko p load upon pi is 1 minus mod k square because the sum of incident and reflected power should sum of the reflected and the load power should be equal to the incident power these are the next set of important formula for you okay now what do you ideally want everybody okay this is also direct question na one mark one one marker question yahan se aata hai what do you want next ideally what do you want ideally what do you want you want that whatever power you have sent whatever power is incident on the load it should be totally absorbed by it the signal information is totally transmitted into the receiver ideally we want p load should be equal to pi and if you want p load equal to pi right p load upon pi one hona chahiye right and for it to be equal to one mod kl should be zero hey right. for it to be equal to one by this simply means that p load upon pi should be equal to 1 that is possible if mod kl is equal to 0 that is possible if mod kl is 0 mod kl is 0 if by kl is magnitude of a number is 0 if that number itself is 0 and this means zl minus z not should be 0 and this means ZL should be equal to Z not, and that is what is the concept of matching. That is what is the concept of matching. You should have a load impedance which is matched with the impedance of the line, and this line is said to be a line which is matched with respect to the load impedance, which is matched with respect to the load impedance. Yes, 
such a story is the matched line story zl equal to z not and such a line is referred to as the matched line and this is the condition required for maximum load this is the condition required for maximum power transfer this is the condition required for the maximum power transfer okay and that is the condition of matched line right that is the condition for matched line okay if the line is not matched to the load there will be some reflections there will be some reflections and there will be some signal which will return back so another important point of interest here is the return loss another point of interest here is the return loss okay the return loss in decibel yes it is commonly defined in decibel only the return loss on a transmission line is given by the formula is given by the final formula we like dete but it is given by the formula 20 log pi divided by pr pi divided by pr and after solving it already i have given you pr upon pi okay already i have given you the formula for pr upon pi that is mod k square so yeah one upon mod k square oga solving it oh sorry this is 10 log because we have written the power form 10 log pi upon pr and after solving i get this formula as minus 20 log mod kl return loss next can be this question that can be discussed from here return loss of a transmission line return loss of the transmission line so next kya ho sakta hai okay next let us discuss the short circuited line okay short circuited line is one which is terminated in short circuit which is terminated in short circuit yes Ritwik, good for reminding me okay so the password for today's pdf is very simple it's line okay i'll share you the pdf in my telegram group the password will be line the pdf will be password protected and the password is l i n e line very simple password to be placed here l i n e okay everybody please note down line in everything in small l i n e that is the password that is going to be the password done isko dekh lete hain short circuited line is one which is terminated in a short circuit is one which is terminated in a short circuit Right. This is what is the load impedance zero. It is terminated in short circuit and what is the meaning of short circuited impedance is zero. Okay. What is the meaning of short circuited impedance is zero. Right. We call this input impedance equal to ZSC. Okay. ZSC the input impedance of a short circuited line and after solving let me give you the final formula. We know the Z in formula only thing in the Z in formula we have to put ZL equal to zero and the line has some impedance Z naught. After putting down the value you get the formula as Z naught tan hyperbolic Z naught tan hyperbolic gamma L Z naught into tan hyperbolic gamma L okay if it is a lossless line suppose lossless ka bhi bata de pe so for the lossless line this becomes J Z naught tan beta L because we all know for lossless line tan hyperbolic gamma L is J tan beta L the same theory we have discussed earlier also okay and this input impedance will be referred to as zsc zsc means the input impedance of a short circuited piece of line and if it is open circuited piece of line if it is open circuited piece of line okay if it is the open circuited piece of line okay so open circuited line is one which is terminated in open circuit it is the one which is terminated in open circuit It is the one which is terminated in the open circuit. It is the one which is terminated in the open circuit. And what is that open circuited impedance? Ye to ho gaya Z naught. Okay. And this is what is the input impedance, which I am going to call it as Z O C. Right. And this is the open circuited line. Open circuited line means load impedance. What is the open circuit impedance value? It is infinity, right? ZL tends to infinity. After putting the ZL infinity, we get the formula Z naught divided by tan hyperbolic gamma L, right? Or also equal to Z naught by, for lossless line, agar isi ko lossless mein convert kar dein, 
So, if I want to write down the formula for lossless line, it is Z0 by J tan beta L. Take it done. Now, one is Z0 into tan, one is Z0 divided by tan. So, when I multiply both, an important formula here se bhi question ban jata hai. That is the ZSC, dear. If the input impedance of a short circuited line is multiplied by the input impedance of an open circuited line, you get the Z0 square. That means the ZSC, the ZOC, and uh, ZSC, Z0, and ZOC, they are in the they are in the geometric progression or I can say that as a bol sakte hai, Z0 is equal to the geometric mean geometric mean of ZSC Are bhai. and ZOC it is the geometric mean of the ZSC and the ZOC it is the geometric mean of the ZSC is multiplied by the ZOC. Geometric mean of the ZSC and the ZOC, right? Chalo. One more quick update for you that, yes, the Baiju's exam prep has, if you want to enroll separately into the test series other than the regular classroom courses. So, yes, Baiju's exam prep also offers you the separate gate and ESC test series. And here you will get the unlimited access to the full length mock test as well as subject wise test. The details of this test series is available in the description. Okay. And here you will get more than 60 plus tests. Okay, covering both for gate separately, for ESC separately, detailed mock analysis, right, including A to Z about your performance, practice and appear on the test only on the virtual scientific calculator, that is what gate also allows you, okay, it has been curated by gate experts, all India open mocks are there and more than 4000 practice questions will be covered through these test series, right. So guys, it's more than one hour, okay, so uh, several important concepts of transmission line we have covered. Right, several important, okay, only thing is I think some impedance matching, impedance transformation and impedance matching one or two formulas, okay, but yeah, I think uh, this session uh, will help you in making a very good amount of short notes, all things that is helpful to relate to the problem. Already question based session of transmission line I have taken earlier in the champion series also I have taken. So, I thought in this let us revise the concepts, okay, because in this one, one and a half hours, no, it's either we can go for question or uh, the concept. So, we have uh, revised the concept, you can practice the question. It's also I have taken the session of question of transmission line on YouTube, you can refer to that also. That's it, let's stop here, it's more than one hour and there will be the next class tomorrow that is related to the circular waveguides. Right. Rectangular waveguides are bahut bar chokhe hoge, but this is the newly added topic okay, from gate 21, but there was no question in gate 21, no question in gate 22. So, maybe gate 23, we are expecting some question from circular waveguide and that is what is going to be there in the next session. That is what next session tomorrow, we will expect circular waveguides. We will discuss about that. Okay guys, bye bye, good night, stay safe and take care of yourself.